Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with part three of my desecrated cathedral tutorial. Now, if you've been following along so far, you'll have something that looks like this, which is our color corrected image with a uh, spooky sky, bit of a hellish glow, and some flickering candle light in the windows, not to mention the rain on the front layer. Now, uh, a storm's not really a storm unless it's got some lightning in it. So the first thing I'm going to do in this part is show you how to create a nice, easy lightning flash. So let's get started. Um, step one, right click and create a new adjustment layer. And we'll call this lightning. In the effects and presets panel, type levels and drag the levels effect onto your lightning layer. At around the two second point, create a keyframe on your histogram. Use the page down key to advance about three frames. And then just drag the top of the slider right down so that it's near the bottom. And as you can see, that flares up the screen um, but keeps some of the detail and shadow layer in so you can still see it. Um, but it's like, uh, like a lightning flash. Now, if I just uh, select the lightning layer and hit U, it'll reveal the uh, keyframes that we've already created. I'm going to hit Shift and Page Down to advance 10 frames and create another keyframe just to hold that uh, lightning flash in place. Advance by two frames and drag the slider on the histogram back to normal. So that gives us our lightning flash. But just to make it look a little bit more realistic, we need to uh, duplicate that animation slightly. So I'll grab the first two keyframes, copy and paste them, and then grab the last two keyframes, copy them, drop the timeline indicator in. You can be as random as you like, because obviously uh, lightning's like that. And what I might just do is uh, create another instance of lightning by grabbing the last four keyframes, copying them, going to the six second mark, pasting them in. I just mix up the uh, arrangement a bit. Okay, so I could play with that a little bit more just to make it look a little bit more realistic, but uh, time's pressing and I need to move on. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is create a fake 3D effect, just to give it that sense that we're looking at a, a piece of footage rather than a still photograph. And uh, to do that, I want to duplicate the cathedral layer. So select it and hit Control and D. I'll just solo it so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. We don't need the uh, outer glow, so delete the layer styles. Making sure the layer is still selected. Take your pen tool and we're just going to draw a mask around the outside of the exterior fortifications. Now obviously this is going to take me a few minutes to do and you don't really want to be uh, hanging around whilst I do it so uh, you go and make yourself a cup of tea and I'll uh, see you back here when it's done. Okay, so it's a little bit rough and ready, but uh, that's the general gist of it. I've uh, masked off the exterior wall, and we'll just uh, rename that layer to exterior wall. I'm going to be moving this into the foreground, so we want it to make it look slightly out of focus. Now, we can play around with lens blur to do this, but uh, frankly, that's pretty processor intensive. All you really need to do is select the mask and just feather it off by about five pixels. Okay, so I'll just unsolo that so you can see the next step. We want to uh, change all the building elements in the scene be the candlelight, the windows, the exterior wall, and the cathedral, and set them as 3D layers. I'm going to create a new camera. Straight 50mm will do. So drop that onto the timeline. Just need to drag the exterior wall layer up so it's on the outside of those layers. Hit P to bring down the position. And just drag it down to about 150. So it pulls it into the foreground. Now obviously, 
it's not going to look that great until we do something else with it. So I'm just going to hit S to uh, increase the scale to about 115. And then with the exterior wall layer selected, hold down Shift. And just nudge it into place. Now we can still see the uh, exterior wall on the original image in the background. So what I'd like to do here is just take the cathedral layer and nudge it down a couple of notches. Okay, because we've made all the cathedral elements uh, 3D objects, we can arrange the camera. And by pulling the exterior wall closer to the foreground, when we move the camera, it'll shift in front of the, the cathedral. Now there are obviously limits to what you can achieve with this um, because you want to uh, make sure it doesn't go outside of the bounds of the image. So you've got to be very careful of the edges and, uh, and angles. In fact, uh, now I mention it, I can see that the uh, clouds layer has become visible, so I'll just uh, nudge that a little bit further down and just reset my camera. So, with the camera selected, twirl down the options, create a keyframe for the zoom value, and just zoom in, probably about 1500. And that'll just give us a little bit of latitude later on. And then take the uh, timeline indicator to the end of your timeline and zoom in to about 1600. and that will give us a nice slow advance. But it's not really making the best of the, uh, the 3D effect. We really want to see that kind of parallax between the exterior wall and the cathedral behind. So now that the exterior wall is in the position where we want it to be, we want to parent it to the cathedral, because otherwise what we're about to do will fall out of sync. So with the cathedral layer selected, hit R to bring up the rotation values. Create a keyframe on the Y rotation at the beginning of your timeline. And just pivot it by about five, four or five degrees. And take the timeline indicator to the end and shift it to about minus 10 should do it. Okay, so that creates a nice slow advance. And you can see the exterior wall shifting in front of the cathedral layer in the background. Okay, hopefully I can fit this last stage in before we uh, hit the 10 minute limit. So I'll um, get straight to the point. To hide the, um, the exterior wall that's in the background, um, we are just gonna cover it up with a bit of fog. So, First step, create a new solid, we'll call it fog. I'm going to drag this fog layer so that it sits between the exterior wall and the rest of the uh, cathedral elements. In your effects and presets panel, find your fractal noise. Drop it onto the fog layer, hit Control, Shift and N to create a new mask. Hit Control and T to bring up the transform for that mask and just drag it down until it's just above the, uh, the exterior wall. Now I'm going to rotate it so it's in line with the perspective of the building. Nothing fancy here. And just hold down shift and just extend the mask parameters beyond the edges of the screen. Hit M to bring up the mask properties, find the feather, and we're just going to feather that right down by about 90 pixels. Okay, it's sitting a bit high, so uh, with the fog layer selected, hold down shift and just nudge it down a little bit. We also want it to be animated slightly, otherwise it's just going to be static fog and that's not going to be very convincing at all. So at the beginning of the timeline, tap the evolution stopwatch, end of the timeline, add a rotation value of 1 
and just for a little bit more, twill down the transform, hit the offset turbulence to create a keyframe at the beginning of the timeline, move it to the end, and then just drag it on the X value just to have it slowly drift across the screen. Okay, so that's looking quite nice, but it's just a little bit too uh, visible to make it look more transparent. But what I prefer to do is right click and select the blending mode of screen. And that just gives it that nice bleached out ghostly layer, which does a really good job of hiding the uh, exterior wall points in the background. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm at the end of my 10 minute limit, so uh, hope you found it useful. Look out for part four. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.